Greetings, Faith Chapel, and happy Valentine's Day to all of you. And hopefully, you get a nice, quiet, enjoyable day. So this Sunday is Transfiguration of Our Lord Sunday, and that is what we're going to be covering in the scriptures today. But before we do so, let us begin our worship together in prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise and all glory possible to you for the gift of your Son, for the journey that he took here on earth so that your kingdom in heaven could be proclaimed. We ask, Lord, that as we hear your word, it may find its way deeply into our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, and it's chapter 9, verses 2 through, verses 2 through 9. So listen for the word of our Lord. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of our Lord. Have you ever taken a journey? We probably think of that in a way of traveling, but not always. We certainly take journeys all the time. We journey to the grocery store. We journey to have our car worked on. We journey to do any multitude of things even go out to eat. Those are all journeys. They have a beginning, a middle, and an end. But there are also other types of journeys. One of those being a spiritual journey. <clears throat> Another could be a philosophical journey. And they too have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And in many ways, a past, a present, and a future. As we go along that journey, the parts that we have already taken become part of the past. The moment that we're in at a precise time is the present. And then there's always the part to come, our future. Jesus, throughout his entire life, had been on a journey. And throughout scripture, if you pay attention, you will discover that parts of it he doesn't even know 
that are coming yet. It's all the future. And there are times that he's in the present moment. And there are times that we see looking back at what things occurred to him. What brought him to the journey. What led him on the journey. And in this moment of the transfiguration, this is a very present moment. And in that present moment for Jesus on this journey that he's taken, some others come alongside of him. And for most of us, that's true of every journey we take. However, those who come alongside of him for this journey are no longer on this earth. They have gone on to the kingdom of heaven. And so in this present moment for Jesus, he stands not only on earth, very much like us, but very much also in the kingdom of heaven with Moses and Elijah with him. It is a present moment and he is transfigured by it. For to step beyond this world and into the kingdom of heaven, one must be changed. It has to happen. And so Jesus is. And he is able to take some time for a very short conversation with prophets of the past. Now, that particular moment for those who went with him was a tad bit terrifying. They had no idea what to speak, what to say, and just kind of spurred it out. Well, we'll put up some tents and everybody can just kind of stay the night. And that's not quite what was going to happen. But Jesus, again, was given a portion of what his future journey would be. And as they're coming down from that mountain after this transfiguration, continuing on their journey, Jesus tells them, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Now, for most of us, raising of the dead means zombie apocalypse. But for Jesus, it was a very different thing. And again, the poor, poor gentlemen that climbed that mountain with him were clueless what that could possibly mean. But again, it was part of Jesus' journey. And in that present moment of transfiguration, he was able to look into the past, to talk with the prophets of the past to be changed in that very present moment so that he could change the world in the future. We all have journeys that we're on and each one looks different from one to another, but we all have the past of our journey, the very moment that we're living the present time of that journey. And we all have a future yet, that junior. But just as Jesus had that moment of transfiguration and that those who had gone on stood with him and talked with him and were present in that present moment, we have that now today with our Lord and Savior. For he is present with us in every moment. It is not something that we have to wait for or something we have to dream about. It is every present moment. And that should change us just like it did Jesus and transfigure and transform us to be more like him. Amen. 
And so as we end our time together, let us do so prayerfully. Let us pray. Holy God, it can be so difficult for us sometimes to see beyond the wonder and the awe of you to the things that you are trying to teach us. We pray, Lord, that in our present moments that we're able to fully focus upon you and that we are to see the moment through your eyes so that the future that you want for us and for the world can come to pass. Remind us, Lord, that we're not alone in these moments that we take on this journey, but that you are with us that you guide us, you lift, of us, lift us up, and correct us when we need it. And we pray, Lord, that we can hear those words from you, the ones that you give to us so often that we ignore, that you love us. And what a great gift that is. And all this we pray with praise and glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So may this Valentine's Day be a day of love and a present moment of being and loving those around you. Be safe, be well and grace unto you.